Hello Dojo Disciples and welcome to another Stuff Vink Sent Me. And today we're going to talk about the Super Game Boy Controller, uh, specifically for Super Famicom. Avid watchers might have noticed this item before, along with some other things that Vink actually brought personally with him, including these Transformers games for the N64 and Game Boy Color, uh, which we'll get to at some other point. And I believe bringing this might have been a late response to our earlier videos about the Super Game Boy 2. This is a Super Famicom or Super NES controller uh, that is specifically designed to work with the Super Game Boy, or at least uh, better label its functions. So while this is Nintendo official, at least as far as, far as these things go, it's actually um, created by Hori. And Hori is a brand that I love and has a long stored history with Nintendo, uh, making such controllers as uh, this one for the Famicom, uh, this Famicom 4 Players adapter that we've reviewed in, in previous videos, um, as well as one of my favorites, uh, this Super NES style GameCube controller uh, meant for games that don't really need the thumbstick, but has uh, just about every button that you would want on a, on a GameCube, uh, minus the full range clicking but I would, I would use this for fighting games like Smash Brothers or uh, Beautiful Joe and, and things like that. So this controller certainly seems to be a predecessor. It has all the buttons that you would expect on a Super Famicom or Super NES controller. A, B, X, and Y are laid out in the uh, typical star pattern, uh, but also L and R are present right here instead of uh, up, in the, up in the sides. So this does function, if you uh, switch to um, SFC here for Super Famicom, um, as a Super Famicom controller, although the placement of these might not be great for some games that you would want to play. The boxy shape, um, unlike the more streamlined uh, Super Famicom style uh, controller, seems to try to indicate the original Game Boy that ex existed at the time uh, from 1989 onward. Uh, this guy right here, boy, uh, apologies, I seem to have lost the faceplate for my Game Boy. It's around somewhere, it just fell in a box and I wasn't able to find it in time for the video, but man, look at, look at that glue, that 30 year old glue. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, anyway, as you can see here, there, there's this sort of deliberate similarity with the mono speaker on the Game Boy. Um, it's just for show, it's not actually a speaker, but it is meant to, uh, to evoke it. Interestingly, the Game Boy actually can do stereo through the headphone jack, it just doesn't have stereo for non-headphone use. But these are the kinds of games you would expect to play here, and even the buttons are colored uh, like the Game Boy, as, as you would expect. So the four additional ones for the Super Famicom make it look a little bit like they're blending into the background there, and so I appreciate that for certain. Um, although, ooh, that, that Game Boy logo was a little, little bolder on here, but maybe the Super Game Boy's, I believe the Super Game Boy's logo is also bolded comparatively. All right, so I guess the best thing to do now is to try it out. And if we're gonna do that, we should do it with the original hardware. None of this SNES stuff. I got the Super Famicom Super Game Boy at Midwest Gaming Classic in uh, 2019 for $10, so now we actually get to use it. Yeah, look at that, it really is a good match. So if we're gonna do this right, might as well use a contemporary and classic title to try it out, the Japanese Game Boy version of Super Mario Land. Ooh, I'm in front of the camera for one of these for a change. Like my shirt? Thought it would be appropriate. All right, let's try it out, shall we? Okay, uh, make sure I'm on Super Game Boy. Um, right away we have the window button on R here. Uh, we can pick all these cool Super Game Boy options. Uh, control type switching A and B uh, to X and Y if you want. Uh, getting rid of the border, changing color palettes. Oh god, how do I make this go away? <laughs> Looks like it shows F as the default here, so I'm just gonna go with that. Push it again. Oh yeah. Um, there, there's noise. That there's, there's speed slowdowns. Oh baby. How do I make it speed up again? It looks like it's just 
permanently slow now. That might explain something I noticed before. Uh, and then you can mute. So you can tell it's muted because I'm pushing that speed button again and not a lot's happening, so back on. So I'm not like 100% clear on if the switch does a whole lot. Yeah, the L and R buttons just don't work anymore in this mode. X, X and Y as well. So now it's in this, basically only the A and B buttons work and select and start. What is the purpose of the slowdown button? Like seriously. I, I won't lie, when I tested this out earlier, I thought that there was a, uh, a clock speed issue going on with the Super Game Boy, and I was gonna show the Super Game Boy 2 and be all snarky, but really it was, I pushed the slow down button. That's normal speed. That is the sound I'm used to hearing. It sounds a little distorted though. But just to make sure we're on the up and up here. All right. The sound already is way improved. This feels just like the Game Boy experience, which was the point of the Super Game Boy 2. It does seem like it's a little faster. Does the slowdown work better? Man, you know, I, I really didn't play this game. I played uh, Super Mario Land 2, which uh, had bigger sprites. Um, th th this seemed like such a weird, it was, they worked too hard to make like the proportions of a Mario game on a Game Boy screen, which, I mean, it works, it's ingenious, but it's it, it's a weird thing to get used to uh, when, you, when you're used to much larger blocks. Like these Goombas are so little. And these bugs, oh, those bugs are like kind of the ones from uh, the Mario Brothers game, the original. Now, all right, let's, let's try a couple of experiments then. All right, so with the Super Famicom controller in, uh, indeed the X and Y, L and R buttons don't do anything like in the Super Famicom mode uh, on the Super Game Boy controller, but you push L and R together um, and all this stuff comes up. So the additional options that the Super Game Boy controller provides really are uh, intended for, work, for use um, with the hardware, both Super Game Boy and Super Game Boy 2, in a way that you can't get with a Super Famicom controller. So that's good to know, but I'm also curious how it fares for certain other kinds of Super Famicom games. Well, Super NES. Because this reminds me a heck of a lot ugh, of this. That's what I'm talking about. Plain Killer Instinct with a regular Super Famicom Super NES controller. Not great with those shoulder buttons, but with this. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, thank you for watching Stump Fake Sent Me. If you liked what you see, why don't you subscribe and watch more? We got a lot of awesome stuff coming up for this future retro fall. Also, be sure to listen to the Famicom Dojo Video Game Podcast, uh, where we get lots of great episodes, plus uh, a new surprise podcast and other great shows from their entire podcast network. Famicom Dojo. Oops. Oh god. All right, I'm just going to pause this while I set up. Was it still recording?